Hi. Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to Poem Praise 2 and peace and blessings be upon you and your family this evening. Now we are going to go ahead and get into coping with your partner's jealousy. And this is by Nina Brown. Currently right now we are in chapter number three. This is going to be take four of this chapter. We are um, going to read through need for nurturance and need for defense. I'm not going to hold you too long. It's just going to be about 10 minutes for that. I certainly do apologize for that noise there in the background. Let me go ahead and clear that out here. Just one moment. I'm going to turn the turn the speaker off just in case there's any notifications in the background. You will not hear it just like you just heard a couple seconds ago. All right. Let us go ahead and get into this read, which it reads as such. Nurturance is also a universal need, whereas a need for affection is a desire or yearning to be loved and approved of. The need for nurturing focuses on a more basis need that is tied to survival. Everyone needs to be cared for in order to survive. Babies are totally dependent on others for nurturing, while adults are expected to be somewhat self-nurturing and not as dependent on others for their survival. Again, there is a specter of destruction embedded in the need for nurturance. This need is deep-seated and can be unconscious if the person lacks awareness of its intensity and impact. Although your jealous partner may be capable of fending for himself and can survive, he may also carry a fear of not being cared for. And for him, that means he will not be able to survive. People like this can be very dependent and clingy without understanding why they are this way. The objective and rational reality is that they can and do cake. They can. Let me try that again. They can. Mm -hmm. Now I know we, we tried it again and we know that they can. Let me find my place, y'all. Now, thank you for your patience and waiting on me to find my place where I was at. <laughs> People like this can be very dependent and clingy without understanding why they are this way. I just had to reiterate that. The objective and rational reality is that they can and do take care of themselves, but they are emotionally and psychologically convinced of their inability to do so. Adults who did not get this early nurturing needs met, those who receive inconsistent or interrupted nurturing, and those who carry old parental messages about their inadequacy can exhibit behaviors like the ones below. Check to see how many of these apply to your partner. If he or she, because this go male, masculine, or feminine, male or female, has five or more, he may have a strong need for nurturing, a need for reassurance, helplessness, frequent requests to others for assistance or rescuing, procrastination for fear of being wrong or inadequate, a strong desire to please others so that they will not abandon him, frequent checking in with others just to maintain contact, anxiety when you are away, or just out of sight, a strong desire to be involved in almost everything you do, looks to you to do things for him that he 
could do for himself. My apologies. That was a notification too. Okay, got it. Clinginess wants all of your attention. A person with many of these characteristics, or not these, but a person with many of the characteristics listed above can easily become jealous and frequently does so because of this uh, deep-seated need for nurturance that is more expected in a child than it is in an adult. You may have been unaware of the extent and depth of his need and nurturing and were not expecting the jealousy. You may stay in constant state of tension because the jealousy is so frequent. And there seems to be no rhyme or reason for its emergence. Now, chapter 7 discusses the clingy jealous partner in more detail, which we will get there. But you know, it'll be a little bit later on. Because right now we still in what chapter? What chapter did it say? Yeah, chapter four. Okay. Now the next section, I'm going to check, see if we have enough time. I see we finished that section because we usually only do about 10 minutes. Yeah, we got enough time. Let's go ahead and knock this one out. Need for defense. Uh, or not defense. Deference. Ooh. D-E-F-E-R-E-N-C-E. -E -E. Okay. Okay. Deference is the act of showing submission to someone, although the submission is voluntary and courteous. It also carries the notion that the other person's opinion, wish, or judgment is better in some way. The deferential person is yielding to a superior intellect, status, need, or argument. The person who receives uh, deferential treatment is treated as superior and deserving of the yielding others give him. The word deference has to defer as its base, which can simply mean to put off. There are times and situations where you want to put off or delay your needs, opinions, judgments, and so on in favor of someone else's needs. The ability to delay gratification is a characteristic of mature adult behavior. Delaying the satisfaction of your needs, not expressing your opinion, and yielding to someone's judgment may be appropriate in many situations. So, to show deference is not undesirable, nor is wanting to be shown deference undesirable in and of itself. However, if your jealous partner has a strong need for deference, he can become enraged when he does not get it. When you show deference to someone else or when you refuse to yield and insist on your needs being met. He sees the deference to others as undermining him, a signal that he is inferior in your eyes which arouses the fear that his hidden inadequacies are revealed and the thought that you will abandon him is triggered. The person who has the extreme need for deference can display some of the following behaviors and attitudes. Become upset when someone suggests that he is wrong or that he made an error. Expect to have his opinions, decisions, and suggestions accepted promptly without modification or disagreement. Tends to get upset when he feels he does not get the respect he feels he merits. Feels that others should recognize and respect his superior knowledge, ability, intelligence, and the like. Over reacts to perceived opposition for even the smallest thing is quick to point out that others would not fail or make errors if they would do what he tells them to do. Does not seem to recognize the validity of others' positions, opinions, and judgments. Has an attitude that his perspective is the only correct one. 
This extreme need for deference is related to an underlining conviction of personal inadequacy and flaws that is masked by arrogance, grandiosity, and contempt. Thus, when you react to the latter, you are ignoring the hidden thoughts about personal adequacy. And these are the more powerful ones. More is presented on this topic in the section of underdeveloped narcissism in this chapter and in chapter 8. That does complete uh, the two sections that we completed in this book for the need for nurturance and need for deference, not defense. And I'm going to let you know the next section we're going to come up on for our next take for coping with your partner's jealousy is healthy adult narcissism, the developed self. So if you like, go ahead and hit that like button of subscribe. You can certainly share this with family or with friends and hit the notification bell. So you'll know when I'm coming with another read for you or a poem too, here on Poem Praise too. So I want for you to be well, to take care, to be safe, and it be at thy will. I'll talk with you soon. From me to you, it is Poem Praise too. So, till next time. Later, y'all.